Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Millennium Stage in our European Month of Culture Performance. Tonight we are proud to present the Embassy of Belgium. Please welcome to the stage Paul Ortz and Karen Ashbrook. <laughs> Guten Abend, bonsoir. Um, we're very happy to hear. This first tune that we played for you was a French tune that was originally called Vals Petit Déjeuner, but then the composer changed his mind about it after breaking up with the woman that he wrote it for, and he called it La Mal Aimable, the not so nice lady. Um, this is a, con a rather contemporary French tune. We like to play some music tonight from all over Western Europe. That's the theme of the night. Um, and we'd like to start with England. A couple of tunes we play for English country dances periodically. Uh, here's a th set of three country dances. One is called um, Well Hall. Well Hall. Uh, the English love their real estate. Um, the other is called Jamaica. And the last one is called... Barberini? 
Barberini's Tambourine. One of the themes is international Europe music. Uh, there was a dancer, Italian dancer, named uh, Rosalba Barberini, if I don't, uh, my memory doesn't fail, who caused a riot in London in the 1760s with her tambourine dance.
Well, now we're going to play a set of um, folk tunes from Belgium. They're Flemish. And uh, the first one, Paul will tell you about once he switches to his accordion. The second one is, uh, is the bear dance. It's a children's dance similar to the hokey pokey, where you go and hunt the bear with various parts of your body. You know, <laughs> get, get, you got the whole body in on it. Tell them um, first. first tune is called the Marche van de Beginnen, the March of the Begins. Um, one of the reasons we're playing it is, is that we just witnessed the end of an era in Belgium. Um, in the Crusades, many women were left alone because their husbands died, and they started living together in certain parts of town. They were called beguinages, and at 9 o'clock at night, no men were allowed in there, and they developed a sort of semi-monastic lifestyle. Um, and in 17 or 18 Flemish towns, you have a part of town, the beguinage, where only women would live, and um, they're now all... UNESCO World Heritage Sites. They are sort of an, a window into other times because they were all usually built in the same uh, area, the 15, 16, 1700s, various times. And so these begins were part of public life. And uh, when there was a procession, the begins would march together to this tune. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention that the reason to bring it up um, in January, February, March, the last Beguine died at age 92. So it's the end of an Recently, era. and that's the end of the era that I was talking about. So for 700 years we've had them, and they're gone. Thank you. 
now we're going to go over to Spain and play a set of Munieras from Galicia and Asturias. And that's part of the Celtic um, region in Spain. There are actually seven Celtic nations. We mostly play, in the Celtic world, we mostly play Irish music, but we do play a bit of music from the other Celtic cultures. So these come from sunny Spain. Belgium, and um, this next set of three tunes each has a very different origin. The first is a contemporary waltz, Madeline's Waltz, written by Wim Poussin. And Wim has been playing traditional Flemish and also some Dutch music and Irish music for many decades. He's a piper, he's a Flemish bagpiper, but he also plays the wooden flute. And we met because we have the same builder. My wooden flute was made by Patrick Olwell, and Patrick told me, you've got to meet this guy in Belgium. He's a great musician. And it turns out he writes wonderful tunes, too. So the first is from Wim. And then the next tune was popularized by a Flemish folk band called Cadrill, but it's actually a Dutch, it's a 17th century Dutch, um, 17th or 18th century Dutch folk song that comes from the Burn Leeches in Contradansen. It's the, it was a little booklet, a pamphlet of dance tunes, the farmer's dance tunes. And then the last tune is um, especially meaningful to me because we learned it for a very special occasion. It's the March, Van the, uh, the March of the Archduchess. It's from um, 
the Martinelli collection. They were an Italian family that moved to Belgium, to Diest, and um, collected folk music there in the 1700s. In the 1700s, yes. Paul's, Paul was the, res the source for that. And uh, we learned the tune because um, the Washington correspondent, the U.S. correspondent for the VRT News, that's the National Belgian Flemish News, um, Gret de Kaiser was receiving an award a couple years ago, and uh, we were called into play for her to receive this award. And I'm learning Flemish at the Belgian Embassy, and I see her on the news. I watch the news on the internet every night. So it was really exciting to like finally get to play this special piece of music for her. And now she's moved on. I think um, she's just doing special things for them. But so here we have um, Madeleines and Zutte Isabel and March van de Archduchess. And Paul is playing a harp guitar, in case you were wondering. And I'm playing a hammer dulcimer. Its Flemish name is hakabort, which means chopping board, or tampenon is the French name.
Well, we're going to go to Germany now. The instrument I play, the hammer dulcimer, or the hackebort, as they say in Flanders, is found all over the world in the Northern Hemisphere. And there's an international organization, the World Symbolum Congress, that meets every two years in a different country. And um, it's a very popular Bavarian instrument. We met in um, Oberammergau, I don't know, about six or eight years ago, and I learned some of the music, some of the Bavarian music while we were there, which I have to say is very well suited for an American hammer dulcimer. And uh, this is a landler, this is a couple dance from Bavaria. Everybody. I feel like I should put a dirndl on. When we were there, you know, we were taking the train from Munich and everybody was dressed in traditional clothes. The men had lederhosen on and the women had these dirndls. And you know, it was like, do they dress like this all year? But it was Oktoberfest when we were there. So apparently for all of October, there were a lot of people dressed like that. One of my favorite things to do is play the mandolin. I didn't bring one today because I was already bringing enough stuff here. Um, and I like to play a lot of Italian American music. If anybody knows anything about it, let them come and talk to me. I'm very interested. We'd like to play a piece that was imported by an immigrant in the 20s and published in New York. It's called La Più Bella Tarantella. Um, and uh, it has all the ingredients of a southern Italian tarantella. You may have heard uh, the story that a tarantella is the type of dancing that they do in the south of Italy when you get bitten by a tarantula, a big spider. I always thought it was an old wives' tale, but actually there are tarantulas in southern Spain and in southern Italy, and there is a kind of disease that's called tarantism, where people just start thrashing around, and uh, maybe that's what you do when you dance the tarantella. Uh, so, La and, uh, Piubella. Paul's, Paul's accordion is Italian-made from a family that's been in the business for at least five generations. Yeah, Castelfidardo is the place to get great accordions. Ready. Right key.
these mandolin tunes have all these little dramatic interludes with dynamics written into them. A little bit different than a lot of folk music. You're just one volume all the time. Well, speaking of folk music, Paul is going to play um, the Flemish version of an instrument that's found throughout a lot of Europe and um, is even found in Appalachia. A lot of Americans don't realize it's not just an Appalachian instrument. And um, this is probably the only Flemish folk music instrument that has an unbroken heritage since, it was, since its beginning. This thing is called a hummel. And a hummel is the same word that you use for a drone, like the male bee that does all the work for the queen bee. Uh, but also drones in the sense of it's a drone instrument. It's like bagpipes. You have two notes that are a low fundamental and a fifth and everything. Uh, you just have a scale or scales that you play on top of that. Uh, as Karen said, this is the only instrument in Flanders or in Belgium that has had an uninterrupted tradition. It was extremely popular during World War II and uh, apparently World War, World War I contributed enormously to that popularity because you know the Belgian soldiers were sitting stuck in the trenches for four years uh, with nothing much to do, so they started making instruments uh, with uh, supposedly wood of coffins and telephone wire or whatever they could get their hands on, and they called these front mandolins. There is actually some pictures that have been preserved of uh, soldiers playing these not homemade instruments, but uh, trench-made instruments. We'd like to play a couple of traditional tunes that people play on these instruments. The first one is from uh, near where I grew up, north of Antwerp. Um, it's called a Hexendance. A hex is uh, a witch. Uh, this tune is in the Phrygian mode, which it's you don't find in the Lydian mode. Lydian it mode. Is Oops, in the Lydian excuse me. Mode. This my, is a DC uh, crowd. The music teacher gets me, sets DC me straight crowd. on these Someone things. Someone will correct you. Um, and uh, <laughs> what else have we got in there? Well, the, actually. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. We were talking. We were. The theme of this concert was sort of international European music. It's fascinating. In the days of Erasmus. Uh, they talked about the Republic of Letters that preceded the European Union. All these scholars uh, uh, were communicating with each other in Latin, and they just were, they thought of Europe as one place. Uh, and not till recently has that idea become true politically. But I was thinking recently, for the musicians, it's always been like that. The musicians got around, and they didn't even need to worry about language. They could play music. Um, to communicate and to interact with each other and to share music. Uh, talking about sharing music, we were going to tell you the story about uh, playing this tune a couple of years ago. We had German Hackbrett players come to play at a festival here. In and they West were, Virginia. We were done we were with West the concert. Virginia. And uh, we decided to go and play some tunes outside. It was a warm summer night, very friendly. Uh, the problem was a little bit, what do you play? What do we have in common with uh, a bunch of German Hackbrett players that we can play sort of socially? And uh, I had a brilliant idea. There's this tune called Ungaresca, which is Italian for Hungarian, that was published in Louvain in the 1700s by a French composer living in Flanders. Get the international flavor? So I started playing the tune, and sure enough, the Germans played right along we with it. it. And we were all picking and grinning in West Virginia. And to our surprise, a gentleman walks by in shorts, wearing a white undershirt, and with a dog. He stops and he listens for a minute, and he starts singing along with the song that we're playing in a language that none of us understands. And he didn't look the least bit surprised that midnight in West Virginia, on a summer's night, he would encounter a group of musicians playing some odd song. Turned out he was a Hungarian math professor at the local college who went to take for his dog for a walk and heard some people play a Hungarian tune Why that he had not? sang Why in his we? youth. You know, it's yeah, the Republic of Music is. is and endless. it's uh, the song. I actually got to ask him, well, what is this song about? And it turns out it's a song about hunting the bear and wearing your galoshes as you go and hunt the bear. And so. Anyway. And then the last, actually, we go to one other tune after that. It's a Renaissance piece, Ungaruska. And we follow it with another Renaissance dance, a brawl, brawl de chevaux. And it was so popular, the brawl of the horses, that it's still played today.
Actually, that Ungaresco was the uh, finale tune at the very first World Symbolum Congress that was took place in Hungary, but that was before I was part of the organization, so I didn't know that. Our next Congress is actually this fall in Taipei, and I will be there. Can't wait to learn the Chinese tune that we'll be doing. Um, and I will not be there. He has to teach. Paul teaches Italian and French. Um, so this is another lovely set of Flemish tunes, or they're dance tunes that come from that area. Um, the first one actually probably existed in that whole region, Germany and Netherlands and Flanders. Um, the winter is forgone and the winter is finished. It's over, which I really think it is this time. I think our winter is done. Do you want Let's to hope a so. little more? Um, and be and then, yeah, the, the winter is forgone is, uh, was the lyrics were written down in Middle Dutch. It goes back to the 13th or the 14th century. The music was first published in the 16th century in a lute tablature. Uh, it's a very pretty tune. It seems to be very well known in Germany as well. And um, we'd like to follow that with a contra dance um, from the 1700s. There was a French dance master who moved to Ghent and published a hundred of his own self-created contra dances and the music that went with them. And uh, this is one, one of them that we like a lot. It's called La Bien Aimée.
Tomorrow night, um, the Old Bay Cayley Band will be here as part of the EU showcase representing Ireland, but um, we do a lot of Irish music too. And um, in fact, I teach the Sligo Creek Head School, which is a summer camp for youth for Irish music and culture. And um, there's also a local Irish music camp. I have information for all ages in the back where the CDs are, where I'll be teaching Penny Whistle. And there's an amazing staff from um, the area and from Ireland that'll be there Mad Week. So this first tune is a jig called The Legacy, and we'll follow it with Kiss Me Kate. And this is an Irish penny whistle. And if you are interested in Irish music, you cannot afford not to play this. It's all of $10 to go out and buy one. And you, too, could be, next thing you know, on the Millennium stage playing. one last set here and um, there's this wonderful dance scene folk dance scene the bone ball that you find throughout France and Belgium and up into the Netherlands where the young people are all dancing these old dances and they have these dances that go all night they dance bourrées and mazurkas and all kinds of things um, and there are wonderful musicians writing new tunes in the tradition too so we're going to end with a set of um, new berets. We do want to very much thank the Belgian Embassy for sponsoring us here and the, at the Millennium Stage. Let's give them a hand. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm also very grateful that the Belgian Embassy allows Dutch classes, Flemish, Flemish classes to happen there. So thank you for that too. And uh, do you want to say who wrote these? Yes. Um... These uh, two of the three tunes in the last set were written by a fellow named Stéphane who plays with a French group called Tapage. He's a hurdy-gurdy player. And um, one is called Bourré à Stéphane. The other one is called Les Héritiers. And the other one is called La Bataille. It's a sign of erudition not to be too certain of the names of tunes when you play traditional music because that means that you know a lot of them. <laughs> and, um I also want to thank our sound man, Evan, who's done a fabulous job tonight. Let's hey. give him a quick hand. Thank you, guys. Thank you. For Karen Ashbrook and Paul Ortz. Thanks for coming out.
Thank you.